Hello Commanders, Commander Ricardo here and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Odyssey. We're going to talk today about power play and a power play item I've had my eye on for quite some time. Edmund Mahoon is an alliance prime minister, a big alliance kingpin and after pledging allegiance to him for four weeks or more, you can unlock the Retributor Beam Laser, a small class one beam laser that's fixed mount. He resides in the gateway system, that's his seat of power, so what I thought I'd do is go through the process of unlocking the Retributor Beam Laser, going through the Allegiance aspect of things, and reaping what benefits I can from old Edmund. For those of you new to power play, there is a process to follow. You pick the incumbent you want to pledge your allegiance to. In this case, old Edmund Mahoon, right? And you pledge your allegiance to them for four weeks or more, rising through the ranks. You can view their power and where they're situated on the galaxy map, as I'm showing here. And Edmund resides in Gateway, but a small hop away from where I've been doing all my missions on my stream lately. All that being said, Edmund Mahoom is an incumbent Alliance Prime Minister and the head of the State of the Alliance, hailing from Disco System, and he's a career politician. All that aside, right, which is currently meaningless because it's all elite dangerous law, pledge yourself to him for four weeks or more and you can unlock an item like you can with all the other power play incumbents. So, if we look at the rating, uh, the item we want, the Retributor, is unlocked at rating 3. You can see I've been pledged to him for 4 weeks and 3 days, and I am then now able to unlock this particular item, providing I deliver 750 merits to a particular system and station, either where he's trying to prepare, to expand, or control. Now, I've clicked on preparation here, and you can see, but a short distance away from where I am, there are systems here that could do with a bit of preparation. It's very important you check the three tabs, see what's closest to you, and what you can do perhaps to try and change the background simulation. As you can see, not many people have been doing preparation modes, so not an awful lot of systems are ready for expansion. Although control systems you can also use. So to expand in a system, you have to make sure that a system is being prepared. So I'm going to go with preparation. Uh, that's going to be quite easy. For that, I am going to have to have certain items, which I can get from the power play contact. And the power play contact is located in the contacts tab. Clicking on the power contact, in this case, Violet Chen, you can see there are three items I can pick up from the gateway system. I'm going to go with the top option, collect alliance trade agreements. And for that, I am going to need a big old lump of those, 750. Now I'm currently in my little ship, my little ASP Explorer, and that would take me absolutely ages to get hold of. However, there is a quicker way, but you need a bigger ship and a little well, bit more money to get yourself through this process as quickly as possible. Buying these items, right, costs money. And when I say costs money, you can pick them up for free. But if you want to expedite the process, and expedite the process where you haven't got to wait 29 minutes in between picking up these items, you're going to have to spend 100,000 credits a pop. So typically, with a little bit of mathematics, 750 merits required, 100,000 to advance, that's 7.5 million credits to use this method nice and quick. So I mentioned a big old ship, and for this I'll be using perhaps one of the biggest haulers so far in the game, which is the Lake on Type 9. I've got it outfitted without a shield generator to maximise the amount I can haul to about 780 tons of cargo. Now it is armoured and it is fully engineered, but I am running a risk with a ship this big that I am going to get set upon by pirates. However, and here is the big thing. It is armoured, did I mention that? So a little bit of armour engineering as well can actually stave off a pirate attack before you hit the boosters in and get yourself moving. Now, acquiring all the items that we need is a bit of a process. Like I say, you have to go through it 10, in blocks of 10, 10 items at a time, and then to get past this 29 minute, 30 minute um, embargo before you can buy more, then you have to pay 100,000 credits. This is really laborious, and this is the grind. 
So while I'm whizzing through and collecting these items, the acquisition of these items of power play, let's talk a little bit about Edmund Mahoon and who he is and what he's all about. You've pledged your allegiance to him for four weeks, so why? Anyway, Edmund Mahoon is the incumbent Prime Minister, the head of government and head of state of the Alliance faction within Elite Dangerous. He hails from the DSO system, you should all have seen that, and it's a legacy system that comes through all the games right up to Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Mahoon is a career politician with a strong academic background who knows the Alliance political system well. While some of his counterparts lacked leadership or the ability to drive the disparate elements of the Alliance, he is known to be able to work within the system and gradually get things done. Fascinating. Now old Edmund is great if you're a trader by occupation within Elite Dangerous Odyssey and he offers some really good buffs in regards to trading and is a good patron for miners as well due to his profit vouchers that you can get when you've pledged your allegiance to him at rank 2. He doesn't directly reward combat and the lack of combat based expansion methods rewards players who seek to undermine other powers through interdiction and piracy. However, what can he do to you? Once you get over to the status tab of Edmund, you know, you can see what he offers freely to everyone. In exploited systems, the effect of his patronage creates an environment where you can make an amazing profit on agriculture goods and equipment. Any technology or machinery commodity consumed by agriculture economies. These benefits are great for any trader whose political power doesn't directly reward trade. You also get a 20% reduction on hull reinforcements and cargo racks. So if you want to outrate your massive transport on the cheap, this is going to be the big place to do it. And it's really good as well, I suppose, for hull reinforcements for those stealth builds when you want to go rocking around with no shields. Really with the ranking system, at rank 1 of any allegiance, you really want to get yourself to rank 2 as fast as possible, because all you really gain is enemies. People are going to be out to get you. At rank 2, Edmund will offer you a 5% voucher redeemable at the same control of exploited systems that you can receive them for at the value of all profits. This is great for traders and even better for miners, okay? At rank 3, this is at four weeks of service, you get the Elite Dangerous Retributor Beam Laser, which is what we're talking about today. Now, the thing with the Retributor is, and this particular weapon, it's class one, it's fixed, and it all is done on the basis of overheating your enemy. So you're going to need additional weapons on top of the Retributor to start punching through the damage. The sad truth about this damage, and it really is totally sad, though comparable to other beam lasers, right, it's pathetic amount of damage. That's all it is, and the fact that it isn't gimbaled. So, I'm doing this video as a form of completeness, as I'm going through all the power play modes so I can collect those weapons. Now, for example, if this weapon was gimbaled, it might be worthwhile on some of the larger ship builds, like say at the front of Anaconda or something like that, to give you that little bit of extra edge, overheat people, give them some extra heat damage, but alas, this is not the case. It's only a class one, it's not gimbal mounted, its damage is pitiful, but it does incur a little bit of heat, but you can engineer it like other things as well within the game. So here I am and I'm closing in on finishing up my acquisition of my power play items. Once I've got 750, I usually take, tend to get a little bit more with this ship because if I'm interdicted or if someone shoots me and they go for my cargo, I've got more than enough to complete my mission when I get to the system that is in receipt of these particular items. Now once you've collected all your power play items and your cargo hold is absolutely bursting with whatever you've picked up to go and deliver, for example preparation materials, it's time to select a nice planet that is quite close that you can jump to and go and deliver them. Now take a look of what they're doing on the particular preparation items, make sure you've got the right materials in your hold, plot a course and away you go. Now for example with me mine's only about 40 light years away, it's not particularly far, and once I got there, it's time to offload them. Now offloading these particular materials is quite easy, simply because all you've got to do is rock up to the particular station and just drop them off at the power play contact. Now the power play contact this time does not 
value to the fact of just putting in 10 at a time, you can keep your finger on the right arrow button and that will let you dispense your power play items to that particular contact. Now, once you've done that, it's time to sit back and wait a bit. And it's all about waiting really, because you have to wait for the next system tickover. This particular system tickover happens once a week. Now, currently the system tickover is on a Thursday, but that may be subject to change as is Frontier Development's whim and will. So currently it's on a Thursday. So what does this mean? So you deliver all your stuff and you park your ship at your station of choice. You have to wait till Thursday of that week when the system updates, which will then update your rank and rating with your current power that you pledge your allegiance to, to claim any benefits. That's what it means. So rocking in on a Monday, you've got four days to rate rocking in on a Friday, then you've got another week to wait, okay, before you gain that rank. Very important thing to remember, very important thing to try and understand as well. It's the system refresh that is indeed the key point of all of this. A lot of people come to me and say, oh, I've done everything that you said, but there's nothing there. I can't get to the power play item. You've got to wait for that Thursday. Once you've got it, you can store your ship. Uh, you can buy another ship, for example. That's what I tend to do because the limit on cargo is quite limited. And then what happens then? I tend to fill that particular ship's hard points with that particular item and then I'm away. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to wait to the Thursday takeover and then we're going to see what it's like to have this Retributor beam laser and see how effective it is. So with Thursday now coming around, we're able to go in and fit out a typical ship with our new Retributor beam laser. Now, as I mentioned, it's a small old beam laser, a class one in fact, class one E, and it's not gimbaled, it's fixed. So all those ships you were thinking on putting it on, like a big anaconda to give you a little bit of an extra bonus with some engineered weapons, chances are you're not going to be able to do it because you've got to do that manual point and firing. So anyway, there it is, 54,742 credits will get you a Retributor beam laser. Um, I fitted it onto the front of this Cobra just for demonstration purposes. And, you know, what, other, what else am I really going to put it on for? I mean, there's no point putting it on something like a Vulture, is it? I mean, let's face it, there's absolutely no point doing that because you've got larger slots. It's got to be on a ship that's got smaller slots. And I think it'd be wasted as well on something like an Eagle because the ship is so small, you want something that's going to give you maximum power for the size of the ship. As you can probably guess, I'm not that impressed with the Retributor being laser at the moment but there you go we'll we'll keep an open mind we'll set our fire groups and we'll see how it performs so with two of these power play retributor beam lasers fitted to this cobra it's time to get out and about and see what it all performs like well as you can imagine it just fires like any other beam laser there it is nice thin beam as you'd expect from any class one socket with temperature really if you cast my temperature is around about 34 when I expend a full capacity charge via this beam laser it goes up to about 54 okay I mean nothing too groundbreaking about that is there really um, other things to consider well it's a beam laser you're gonna need something else with this to do a bit of heavy hitting and when we look at the stats for the Retributor beam laser, you can see it's mass, two tons, integrity, 40, power draw, 0.62 megawatts, and damage per second, 4.9 per second, right? And this is the key thing, because a normal 1E beam laser is 7.7. .7. So it's quite a drastic drop in the amount of damage. I mean, okay, the thermal load's gonna be um, a little bit less, because it's not drawing as much power. So, you know, it's not doing as much damage. The whole idea of this weapon is to imbue additional heat to your target as opposed for doing damage. I'm sure there is a place for this somewhere in the Elite Dangerous universe, but for the life of me, I can't find out why. And it's a little bit of a waste of time. My opinion, go and get yourself some prismatic shields if you're hell-bent on doing power play. At least they're worth something. I've been Ricardo. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.